Next, we have data classification policy. <clears throat> Document control page. Uh, related documents. <clears throat> now, this is confidentiality statement. And uh, there you go, contents. So the important thing is uh, when we have data, you classify data. And this classification depends on some labels. So we'll discuss this. So that's objective. So every uh, data must have a data owner. So if it is a document, it's a document owner. If it is an asset like server or database, it's an asset owner. And uh, that's the job of asset owner or data owner to classify it. Okay. Now, we have these roles and responsibilities. It's generic. So the scope, it applies to all employees, uh, contractors, and vendors. Now, this is important stuff. So, data classification description. So, we have uh, four different classes where we can classify the data. The first one is public. Then, the uh, next one is internal use, which is company-wide use. Next is confidential. And next is highly confidential. So, these are the four uh, data classification uh and this depends on company if they want to add uh, some more uh, different classes uh, into data classification. So public data, it means this can be available to any journal public. So all social media posts or marketing posts. So this is categorized as uh, public data. The next one is internal data. Now let's say once any employee joined to company, they see all the company policies. Uh, and they can check all other employee details. So this is only available to internal employees. So the data which are available to all internal employees, uh, we term it as internal data. But any other person outside uh, the company cannot access that data. Okay. The next one is confidential data. So example, an employee join a company, so they can see all internal data. Now, but Let's say that employee goes to a project. Now, employee will get access only to that project source code or that project documents. That employee will not get access to any other project in the same company. So we may have some data which should be restricted to a certain project or certain teams. So that we call as confidential data. So it should not be shared to all employees. Internal, da internal data is shared with all employees, but confidential data is only shared to some uh, set of employees depending on the needs. And restricted or highly confidential data, so this is highly sensitive data, it's limited to a handful of individuals, like uh, production access or company financial records, payment details. So these are highly confidential data, and this should be only restricted to uh, example, let's say less than 10 employees. So that's a classification, uh, public, internal, confidential, and highly confidential. Now, these are some of the policy statement. Encryption in transit uh, recommended for public data. Internal use only. So all company can access, all company employees can access internal data. Confidential data only available to some employees, for uh, example, working in project A, so they don't get access to any other projects. So for this, we should have multi-factor authentication enabled. That's a requirement, okay? And also, we should monitor this access. We usually monitor uh, internal confidential and uh, highly confidential data uh, access logs. Confidential data should be encrypted in transit at rest and at rest both, okay? So this is the encryption requirements, but you see additional requirements are here. It should be, it should have multi-factor authentication and the access should be renewed. And we give access to the employee based on need to know basis only. And once that employee leaves or moves to any other project, then uh, we deprovision that access. Okay. 
Now we have highly confidential data. It's tightly restricted and monitored. It, it is only available to free employees. So production environment access or company financial records. So here also we have multi-factor authentication. Encryption. Okay, we have uh, transparent data encryption or tokenization. So this is on to data classification. Now, we have data labeling as well. So data owner, example, I'm creating a new document for a company, then I'm the data owner of that document. And so similarly, we have asset owner. Example, we have a server, so we create an asset owner for that server. So the responsibility of labeling this public, internal, confidential, or highly confidential, this is the responsibility of data owner. So once we have classified data, there might be some other updates. Example, if some data is public today, after some time it may become uh, internal to employees. So this, uh, this kind of, uh, we have periodic asset recertification and reclassification criteria. So we have teams, infrastructure, security, and legal compliances team. They periodically verify this asset inventory. And they check, okay, if this document or if this asset, uh, it's uh, the criteria what we have defined, example, it's public or internal or confidential or highly confidential. Is it correct? Or do we need to reclassify this asset? And this is a periodic exercise, okay? Uh, data handling guidelines, okay, how you can handle the data. Highly confidential data requires a strong encryption in translated address. So some of the other guidelines here. Uh, other things like uh, training and awareness, compliance and monitoring, escalation metrics. So why we have defined escalation metrics separate in each and other document? Because the escalation metric for data classification should be different, or may be different. That's why we have the first level escalation. It may be to the asset owner or the or data owner. So that's why we have escalation metrics in each and every policy defined as a separate uh, as a separate topic here, okay? Policy exceptions, anyone need any exception to this policy can follow this document. And that's the policy review and updates and conclusion. So text it onto data classification. So if you have any suggestions uh, for this policy, kindly do comments below. Thank you.